Right, good evening everybody. Bible advice about family life or indeed the challenge of family life because sometimes it can be a challenge. And of course all those things that you see on the screen there, happiness, joy, problems, relationships, employment, stress, school, well they're all challenges and all of us in this room face them whether we're young or old. And I want to talk about some of those things tonight because we all live in a modern society and the pressures of family life touch us all. And they bring joy and they bring sadness. And it doesn't matter whether we're male, female, a child, we're adult, single or married. And on the screen there you've got some typical issues of pressures of the modern society. See how many relate to you. Problems at home. I'm not asking for a show of hands. Problems at school. Further education. Employment. Unemployment. Behaviour. Relationships. Health issues. Disappointments. Unfaithfulness. Stress. Marital issues. Okay. Right, some sad facts about marriage. One out of every two marriages in the UK end in divorce. Fact. Vows made on the wedding day are broken sometimes after a very short period. And loyalty in marriage has become more and more questionable. And here's some statistics. In terms of recent divorces, there's the top 20. If you live in Belarus, then you've got a 68% chance that your marriage is not going to last. And in the UK, we're number 10, with 53%. We're actually more than the United States, which is number 12. I'll let you have a look at that for a moment. But that's very sad in terms of statistics. And what are the top five reasons why divorce occurs? Well, if you stick this on the internet, it'll tell you. Number one, lack of commitment. Lack of commitment to a marriage. Lack of communication, in other words, talking with each other between the spouses. Infidelity, abandonment, and alcohol addiction. They're the top five why things go wrong which lead to
And then, of course, you've got the, the priest, the Jewish priest, with the flactress. And, of course, it's remembering, keeping in the forehead the words of God. What on earth is that watch doing there in terms of remembering? Well, I'll let you into a secret. There's a mate of mine at Coventry West Ecclesia, and he's got a way of remembering things. And he gets his watch, and he turns it the other way round. So when he gets home, and he's looking for the time, you think, hang on, oh, yeah, I've got something to remember. It's not a bad way. Um, so uh, I've pinched that idea from him. Good chap, Jonathan Cope. Right, okay, um, putting God's word first in our lives. Deuteronomy 31, please. Deuteronomy 31. And verse 11. When all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Gather the people together, men and women and children and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear, that they may learn, and fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the words of this law. Notice the emphasis to hear, to learn, to fear, which means respect, reverence, and you do. And that just doesn't apply to one person, it applies to everybody. Men, women, and children. It's really emphasised there in this passage. And if we were to look at an example of someone who did that in the Old Testament then the father of the faithful Abraham would be well up on the list. In Genesis 18 verse 19 we read these words. The Lord said, I know Abraham, that he will command his children and his household after him. He was a faithful man and God recognised that he would do that. And furthermore, and they shall keep the way of the Lord. And that way, in verse 19 of Genesis 18, really emphasises the fact that Abraham's children were to follow the ways of God. And of course, the Son of God said in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that lesson applies then, and it applies to us today. And if we were to look at the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ, the very first words that we read of Jesus are when he was the age of 12. You know, stop there and think, who do you know who's 12 years old? Picture them. Somebody who's 12. I know somebody who's 11, and uh, it's a case of, well, a year older, and the Lord Jesus Christ uttered these words. He said, Wis, did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Luke 2 verse 49. Jesus was 12 when he said those words. And if we went to the next, uh, in, in verse 52 of that chapter, Luke 2, Jesus didn't just stop, but he increased in wisdom and stature and in favour with God and man. Jesus kept sharp. He sharpened himself and he grew, grew in grace and favour before his father and before men and women. Well, who did Jesus regard as his family? Well, Mark 3 verse 35 says, For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother, my sister and my mother. So that's really emphasising that to be part of Christ's family, we need to do the will of God. And in so doing, we become a brother or sister of Christ through belief and baptism. And Christ's view regarding children. Let's go to the New Testament, Matthew chapter 18, please. Matthew chapter 18. Some of you have worked out my system. Because whenever I've got a passage here and I've got an underline, I want you to... Uh, turn it up. 
Uh, right, Matthew chapter 18, verse 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, meaning turning, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. And that's illustrating the character that we should all try and manifest. A childlike humility. Look at chapter 19, verse 13. And in these verses, we've got children being brought to the Lord Jesus Christ. What happens? Verse 13. Then were there brought unto Jesus little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not. In other words, let the children come. Forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. So that was Jesus' view of children. And of course there's lessons there for adults as well. Then if we looked further on in the scriptures in the New Testament, we've got some lessons from the first century Ecclesia. When the early church was established... Let's talk about wives, what the scriptures say about wives first of all, because we've got a few wives in the audience. Well, Colossians chapter 3 verse 18 says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as, is, as it is fit in the Lord. Furthermore, in Ephesians 5 we read, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church or the ecclesia. Remember back in Genesis, cemented two, side by side. What God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Husbands, wouldn't like to leave you out of it. Ephesians 5. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them, Colossians 3.19 says. And there's a picture of helping dry the dishes. Yeah, and it's a, a case of you give and take in marriage. You work together as a partnership. We've got a dishwasher. Right. What about Old Testament? Children. Children. Lessons from the Old Testament. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12 reads, Honour thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. That's really good advice. And of course, it's good advice because it comes from the word. How children should look towards their parents. What about the New Testament? Colossians 3 again. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Obey your parents in all things. Who does that? Okay, you know, everybody's got their hands down, which means they always do that. Great. Fathers, Ephesians chapter 6. Provoke not your children to anger, but bring them up. In the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And then, Bible teaching about men and women together. Let's have a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 3. 
But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Quite a clear order which we'll talk about in a moment. Verse 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. We read that in Genesis. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. So in verse 3, there's a very clear order. The head of the man is Christ. The head of the woman is man. And the head of Christ is God. <coughs> But all are one in Christ Jesus if they come through the waters of baptism and submit themselves to God. Because in Galatians 3.28 we read these words. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Hmm. Children again. I don't want to leave you out, you see, guys. Uh, Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Verse 1. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable, I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. Verse 4, we will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord, and his strength, and his wonderful works that he hath done. For he established a testimony in Jacob, and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that... They should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Not to forget. Remember the watch? Remember the knot in the handkerchief? Because if there are children resulting from marriage, then it is a duty of parents to bring them up and guide them in the right way, according to what is laid down in God's word. And if we were to look at a literal translation of uh, one of those verses in Psalm 78, it says, And place in God their confidence and forget not the doings of God, but keep his commands. It's all about making sure we read them, we read it regularly, and we remember them, but most of all, we're doers of them. Doers of the word, not hearers only. Oh, I've got some additional advice for children or young people. Well, it's not me, it's the word of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Remember thy creator in the days of thy youth. We have to remember God all the way through our lives. Proverbs 22 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, or she should go, and when he or she is old, he will not depart from it. And it's in a person's youth, therefore, that we prepare them for the future. And it's great seeing young people here tonight, because... You like vacuum cleaners. You suck things up at an early age. The main thing is you keep remembering and build upon it. A strong foundation. Because the foundation for a stable family life involves trying to live lives that are pleasing to God. Reading the word of God together. Following the Lord Jesus Christ's example. And through regular prayer and then of course this Bible reading 2 Timothy 3 also records but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus 
All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Pause. When I started coming to a Christadelphian Sunday school many years ago, because my mum and dad weren't Christadelphians, I was put in a class with three lads whose parents were Christadelphians. And the teacher would say, look up this particular passage, and they were straight with it, no problem at all. I had no idea. Before I came to the Christadelphians, I'd never looked at the Bible. And uh, I became so aware of this issue that they could all turn these places up because they'd learnt it from a very young age. Do you know what I did? I'll share it with you. I got home and before I went to bed I got a long strip of paper. What did I do with that paper? I wrote every book of the Bible from Genesis through to Revelation and I stuck it on my bedroom wall. And before I went to sleep I'd shut my eyes and I'd think to myself, right, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. And I'd open my eyes to check to see if I was right. And I did that every night until I became more and more confident. And then, of course, it was getting into me about the Word of God. And the other thing I learnt was, when you came to a Christadelphian Sunday school, all those years ago, you got something called a proof. Oh, boy, that was challenging. But I tell you what, if you get a proof, verse 16 is a good one, you know. In Scripture, verse 16. 2 Timothy 3, 16. John 3, 16. Galatians 3, 16. There's lots of them. And uh, it's, a good one to, uh, it's a good one to remember, the verse 16s. Uh, and, of course, John 3, 16. Um, anyway, that's just a personal aside. And then, of course, a strong foundation is all about following the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 2, 21 records, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps. And then this prayer. 1 Peter 3, 12, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Think about that verse. God has made possible prayer through the Lord Jesus Christ. We're foolish if we don't make use of it. And also the negative. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil because he's provided his word as our example and our guide. So using the Bible as our guide, stable family life draws upon essential qualities. Godliness, love, discipline, patience, kindness, consistency, tolerance, understanding, care, wisdom, goodness, forgiveness, selflessness, sharing, faithfulness and strength. And if you compare that with the list that we looked at, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 4, that's completely the opposite. Follow the word of God, and those will be the characteristics that will help you in your lives, whether you're young or old. <coughs> because Jesus is going to come again. He is going to return to the earth very soon. And we need to be ready and prepared for his coming because when he comes his coming is likened to a bridegroom being united together as husband and wife a bride and a bridegroom the bridegroom we're told in scripture is the Lord Jesus Christ and the bride are those who are faithful the chosen men and women who will be granted everlasting life if they are chosen by the Lord Jesus Christ if they've remained faithful to their calling 
And the Bible talks about marriage in that age to come. Last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 7. This is a picture of the time when the kingdom is established and the bridegroom will have come, namely the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give honour to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready. And of course the Lamb is the Lord Jesus, his wife are the true and faithful believers. Verse 8, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Chapter tw uh, so the bride and the bridegroom are there glorified together as one. Chapter 21, verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And what those verses are telling us are in that time, the faithful bride, those who are chosen by the Lord Jesus Christ to live and reign with him in the kingdom of God on earth, will become like a precious stone, changed by being part of the immortal population in the kingdom of God. <coughs> In a time which the scriptures describe as a time of unspeakable joy, when Jesus returns. So in conclusion, to share in the hope of being part of God's coming kingdom upon earth, the Bible clearly teaches <coughs> belief, repentance, baptism and a life of service to God. And in so doing, we will be part of the worldwide family of God. <coughs> Responding to the challenge involves keeping God's principles, involving them in building families, using the Bible as our guide in our daily lives, operating within God's principles, the program of the home, the daily routine, and to ensure that God is the head of the house. Remember the knot and the watch. Throughout our lives, let us remember and most importantly live by the word of God. Psalm 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And remember what God's Son said. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Let us think and act upon the words of God and his Son to guide and prepare us for that future coming kingdom when Jesus returns to this earth. Thank you.